Now, if you have your computers on, don't look at your computers. I want your full attention to the thing. Your lab doesn't matter. Your lab is very simple. It's easy. You, so you can do your lab easily. I'm going to be done with this thing. And after it's done, then you can go start doing your lab. So let me just uh, uh, slideshow. All right. So when we are doing dynamic memory allocation, this is what we see. OK? Sorry, when we are doing non-dynamic memory allocation, this is what we see. Essentially, this is what we have. We have our program. Everybody's OK with colors here, right? Everybody can see colors? OK. So the green thing that you see is your executable, a dot out, whatever you have. OK? And when you create an array, let's say integer a5, the array entirely exists within your executable which means if that integer a5 becomes integer a1 million, the size of executable becomes 1 million integer bigger, OK? And you make it smaller, so the size of your executable will change with the amount of memory you have. This is why you don't need to do any, you don't need to care about uh, memories being allocated or deallocated, because it entirely goes to RAM and starts getting executed. And when it's done, when it's removed, Everything within it, which is your variable, which, which are your variables, are going to be removed from the memory. Therefore, we have no problem. Okay? When we are doing dynamic memory allocation, however, it's a bit different. When we are doing dynamic memory allocation, only the pointer with which you point to the memory that you allocated is inside the executable. So you say integer pointer A, new int 5. Therefore, the array is created outside of your executable. That's why programs who use dynamic memory allocation are very small. But when they are running, they consume lots of memory. OK? And as they run, they ask the system to give them memory as they go through. And you have to take care of it. This is why you have memory leak. When your program ends, the executable is removed from the memory. If you don't delete the one that you have in heap, then it's going to remain in memory, hence you're going to have memory leak. This is essentially the difference between dynamic memory allocation and regular static memory allocation that you do, statically allocated memory. OK? Are we OK with this? Anybody have any problem with this part? All right, let's go for the second one. The other one, before we actually start coding, uh, I'm just going to, without coding, just show simple commands, show you what can uh, go wrong with dynamic memory allocation. So the most common thing, not, this is actually not the most common, one of the most common things, the uh, uh, errors and crashes that you have with dynamic memory allocation is when you don't do it. Which means you have a pointer, you want to have dynamic memory allocation, you forget. Or your logic somehow has a loophole from which uh, you pass through and no memory is allocated and you want to use the memory. So I have type pointer m data, so that data that I have is pointing to a type. And without any dynamic memory allocation, I say m data 5 is set to a value. Or I say target of m data is uh, set to a value. As you see, I draw that blue line out outside of the screen. It means it is pointing to some place that I don't know. I just created a variable called m data. It's garbage inside. That garbage inside is a number. It's address of some place in memory which we have no idea what it is. Therefore, when you want to access it, you get segmentation fault, which means you're out of your segment. OK? That's number one. <coughs> Next one is when you're a good boy, you're a good girl, you make, no, make your uh, pointers null to make sure that you can uh, detect if they are not used or not. But still, you forget to do dynamic memory allocation, and you start 
using it without allocation. So you say m data is null pointer, and then you say m data 3 is value. This is where you get null pointer assignment crash on your, in your program. So whenever you see it says null pointer assignment and program crashes, that means you have a null pointer and you used it without setting it to be, uh, uh, to point to a valid piece of memory. Another thing that is very common is going out of the range of the allocated memory. Now, this is not particularly for dynamic memory allocation. You can do this with any array, and specifically with strings that you forget for that, you forget that single null thingy at the end, you don't allocate it. Usually, when you say, I have m size number of things in an array, the elements, you know that the element starts from 0 to 1 minus, uh, that number minus 1. So if you have five elements, you have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 indexes, right? Therefore, if you have five, you cannot actually point five to anything. And that happens a lot. In this case, it's seven. So if I say I'm data three, I am within my range of memory. I'm setting it to a value. Life is beautiful. In the other one, I say I'm data seven in X. The size was 7, so I go one further. That's enough to crash your program if it's dynamic. If it's not dynamic, it's going to be within your executable, so you start writing over your own logic. That's going to be a fatal crash. Although you are not going out of your segment, but you start overwriting your own executable. That's even worse. <laughs> okay? So unpredictable stuff may happen, and it doesn't happen the first time. Sometimes these things happen and nothing gets detected. And seven years later, your code comes back with some kind of a crash that you have to find out what you have done wrong. So that's another thing. When you go out of the range. So what causes memory leak? Memory leak is caused by reusing a memory that you have without deleting it after uh, pointing it to somewhere else. For example, the M data that you see over here is pointing to the blue allocated memory that's size of 7. And then, without deleting that part, I set data to a new size of memory, which is the brown one. So therefore, the M data pointer will be overwritten with the address of the new brown place, right? And as a result, as soon as this happens, that memory will be lost forever. And this is when you call Bell or Rogers and they tell you, unplug your modem, wait for 15 seconds, and put it back in. Because you have memory leak. Every single time that this routine gets called, those memory leaks are accumulating. It's like you're not a tidy person. You go to the kitchen, it's clean, you have your food, you say, I'm going to wash the dishes tomorrow. Then the next day you do that, then you're going to say, oh, I'm going to wash this one tomorrow. Still, you have space to put the dirty dishes. You keep going, and the dirty dishes pile up. And finally, there's no more space. That's when you have to reboot your kitchen, OK? And clean everything, and then restart from the beginning. This is exactly what happens. So memory leak is essentially not taking care of uh, the memory that you had before. Now, the correct state of an unused pointer in dynamic memory allocation is always null pointer, which means be obsessive about it. Whenever you don't know if something's supposed to be null or not, make it null. Doesn't matter. It won't hurt. OK? So you delete something. Should I make it null? I don't know. Make it null. Doesn't matter. You delete something, immediately afterwards it has to be null. S always mark it that this pointer is not used anymore. So standard commands of C, like delete, won't crash. If you delete a null pointer, delete knows this is null. That's a point. It's not pointing anywhere. I'm not going to delete it. But if you have garbage in it and delete it, it doesn't know that that's garbage. It actually goes to the destination, tries to delete it, and that's where everything goes uh, down the drain. OK? So you've got to be careful about that. So when you dynamically allocate memory, you allocate your memory and you keep your size somewhere so later on you know how many memories you have allocated. If you need to resize it when you get to the point that you, you, you keep using your memory and you reach the limit, how do you know you, you reach the limit? C does not know the size of any 
uh, array. You have to keep track of it yourself. Therefore, you must always have some kind of a place to hold the size of what you want to deal with, unless you have another logic to do so. But this is a standard way. Okay? And then you delete the data exactly how you create it. So when you look at your, your creation, I am creating an array of types in M data. Therefore, I'm deleting an array from M data. It has square bracket. Okay? And uh, you have to make sure afterwards, you always, after deleting, you set the data back to the, the pointer back to normal. And if you have a size, you set that one to zero so you know it's all gone. If you incorrectly delete the data, it's instead of a delete with square bracket, you just delete it, then you are deleting only the first element. Because you are saying delete the target, not the whole array. Therefore, the first element is gone, and the rest become another type of dynamic, sorry, another type of memory leak, which we do not like. Are we okay down to here? All right. When reusing memory, make sure they are actually not being used. So if you follow the rule of setting a pointer to a null, if you follow the rule of setting a pointer to a null, you can always check it. If it's not null, then you take care of unfinished business. It's like you want to clean up. You have a few boxes at home. You just throw, don't throw away the boxes. You take a look inside. See if you want the things inside. If you don't want to, you throw it away. If you want it, you take the stuff out of the box and put it in another place and throw the box away. It's the exact same thing. You always check your memory before you delete it. And then you free the memory, and then you do a, a DMA, dynamic memory allocation, if needed. Always, always, always make sure that uh, uh, you reuse memory, you keep track of the new size, and not forget to always stay within the range of your allocated memory size. Never get out of it. Make sure you understand exactly what the range of your array is. Extremely important. And now we're going to start coding. Now we know what is bad. We're going to start coding uh, up to certain thing, and then the rest we're going to do later. Sorry, I need to drink something through my eyes. Give me a second. I'm at your service. Yes, you have a question. Yeah, you know, it's online. It is already online. Oh, it is? It's for the sec other section. Everything's up, but I'm going to put for you too. So if you see, uh, it says AL as section A lab. Everything's in there, but yours essentially is a repeat of the other one. Uh, on, yeah, in, in the notes. Okay. Yeah, and it, the video is already on YouTube too. Okay. All right. So now, But uh, again, nothing is like participating in a lecture, OK? For some reason, this putting the video on YouTube is like a, a double-edged sword, they call it, OK? It's, uh, in one side, it's good for those people who participate, and then they want to go review. That's good. But it somehow gives people false hope. Oh, I'm not going to listen. I'm going to go home and look at the video. Don't. Participating in a lecture is much more important. Remember that. Let's code. Yes. I couldn't do the agenda anymore. Oh. Last time it happened, I didn't know agenda. Attendance. Yes, question? Sorry. What's the difference between null and empty? Because it says uh, check if this. What is the difference between null and empty? OK. <coughs> OK, attention. Remember what I said when I talk, you don't? Remember that? OK. What is the difference between null and empty? OK. It depends. When you say null and empty, I have to say with. with what respect? Let's talk about strings. What is a null pointer and an empty string, for example? I'm going to give you an example on that. So, so 
So, okay. So what is it? What is the difference between null and empty? That's exactly the difference of. That's the difference between null and empty is this. Just a second. So this, oh, that's, that's bigger than that. This is a pointer, OK? That is pointing nowhere. Sorry for the thing. I am doing it with a mouse. So this is my pointer. This is null. It's not pointing anywhere, OK? This, you have to check to see if p is null pointer. This one. By the way, that's a 0. That's a no. This is an empty string. What the devil did I write over there? This is 0, by the way, in here. OK? There is 0 in here. I'm trying to do it with this awful, awful. OK, there is 0 in here, null. OK? So this one is a pointer that points nowhere. This is pointing to a character that has null in it. That's an empty string. This is a null pointer. An empty string is a string which is empty. It means it's an array of strings that the first element has null in it. The second one, there is no array. The pointer is pointing nowhere. That's null. OK? All right. So now, nobody thinks about the lab anymore. This is not a lab. This is a lecture. Got it? I want your attention here. All right? All right. So we want to, have, we want to create a class for a string. You know that C++ has a class called string with lowercase string, that it takes care of a string so we don't have to worry about null termination stuff, we're going to implement it. We're going to implement our own. So std scope resolution string with lowercase s, that's C++'s. Ours will be stds string with upper, uppercase s. That's my string that I'm going to write, OK? So we are going to write something to keep all those dirty stuff of C string under the hood so I can use the class instead. And I'm going to use it dynamic, so we're going to go through it and see what it is. You have done many of these things. It's like a quick review for you. Are we OK? And I'm going to use the exact same things that I mentioned. So first, I am, I am using, uh, I want to encapsulate a, uh, a character string. Encapsulation is what? What does it mean? Logic and state is putting the data and behavior yes, together. Yes. Putting the data and behavior together. When I say I want to encapsulate a string, a C string, it means I want to put all the features of the C of a C string under the hood inside the string and hide them, so nobody sees them. They can use my string for statements or whatever they are writing without caring about if something is null terminate or not. So that's why I need to have a character pointer. That's going to be my data. That's a string, right? A character pointer, that is data. I need to know what is the size of data, how many things I have in here, right? And that's an in integer m size. So these are the two things that I need to know. I need to know where my data is. I need to know how big it is. And that's it. I don't need to worry about anything else. Now, let's start implementing. And we're going to be quick to see how things are done. All right, so 
obviously, if I create a string, I want the string to be able to get created just like that, an empty string with nothing in it, right? So in, essentially, I want to be able to say string s and create a string, an empty string, right? And then pu put stuff in it if I want to. So that means I need a constructor that has no arguments. And that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to have string, no argument implemented here. So I'm going to have string, no argument. And what is a no argument string supposed to have? That is your thing, the difference between an empty string and no string. OK? In here, I have a pointer and I have a size. I have to decide what is the difference between an empty string and a safe empty state. A safe empty state is a flag I put so I can identify this class is in a unique mode. An empty string is a string that is empty, right? So essentially, I will do that. I'm not going to put it in a safe empty state. Safe empty state is there only if it's needed. If my class doesn't need it, if my class, if it is impossible for my class to go to a safe empty state, why have one? So again, everything is based on logic. OK? For my case, if I have an empty string, I want an empty string. What is an empty string? Empty string is essentially an array of one character, and that's why I'm not going to say just character, I'm going to say character one. It's an array, okay? And that array has zero in it. Oh, so, oh, 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 oh. And that array's first element is null. Or if you like to put it this way, you can put it this way. Potatoes, potatoes. Right? The first element is null, and this is new character, of course. I forgot the new. And obviously, the size of such thing is Is it my cell phone again talking to me? But where is it? OK, I'll take care of it later. Anyways, <laughs> um, I have, we have to actually send this to Google. Say, like, what the heck is going on here? I, I hope I, I scream, hey, Google, it doesn't respond. I teach over here, so tell me what is the vegetable somewhere. Anyway, so m size is 0. So again, this is exactly what I had, what I had here. I do not want to have the first thingy over here. I do not want my, cap, my pointer to point to a null location. I want my pointer to point to an array with one element that is null, nothing in it. And my size definitely is zero, OK? Only one thing, which is OK. Immediately after you create your first constructor, you create your destructor to make sure nothing remains in memory and there is no memory leak. How do we create a destructor? Tilde, name of the class. So I'm going to come over here, string, destructor, and in this destructor, I need to, is it too small? Is it better now? OK, thank you. Why nobody says anything? <laughs> Anyways, so, so when do I want to delete? When do I want to delete the pointer? When do I want to delete my array? When it's pointing to somewhere, right? So it's kind of our desire to say, if m data is, null, is not null, then delete it, correct? That's what we want to do. But remember, that is built-in delete. Delete won't delete something if it's pointing to a null. So you're OK. As long as you, you redesign your class not to make your pointer unnecessarily not null, which means make sure your pointer doesn't have garbage in it, you're fine. Because we have a constructor, now we are building constructors, they are, they are going to build my class the way I ask them to do so, or the way I tell them to do so. Therefore, they have no way to create any garbage in my null pointer, in my M data. I do not need to check for anything in here. I simply say, delete. But I'll make sure 
I delete it the same way I created it. <clears throat> now, remember I told you obsessively set the data to null pointer after you're done? If you do this, I'm going to say good boy, good girl. You listen to me. You obsessively set your pointer to null after you delete it. That is very fine. But at the same time, if I want to hire you, I know you have no idea what that null thing is for. <clears throat> when, when a destructor is called? Um, Timely. Like you mean the result? No, no, no. At what time a destructor is called? Oh, um, when it gets out of scope. When it gets out of scope, which means it. No. No, no, not no. Pass. When it passes. When is a destructor called? Serious? When is a constructor called? When you make a new, at the time of creation, the, 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 a constructor is called. When is a destructor called? Yeah. Right before dying. Okay? So right before an object is going to get destroyed, the destructor is called. Why do I want to set a pointer to null that is supposed to die? Like the object's going to die, literally evaporate. Why do I need to set anything to null then? I don't need to. Yes. No. That's the thing. <coughs> Following the things is fine. If you, if you don't understand, why do it? OK? But understand that in the destructor, you are telling what to do before the object is thrown into garbage. Now, do you wash your disposable dishes before you throw them away? Because that's what it is. I just had a paper this, uh, plate, and I had my hot dog in it. Now I'm going to go wash it and then throw it away. Doesn't make sense. You're throwing it away. Sometimes I do that. But just to make sure it recycles properly. But, but hey, but yeah, but, but let's say we are, we are irresponsible. We are kind of responsible. We recycle, but we don't make a good recycling thing. But what I'm saying is that, what I'm saying is that, keep that in mind. It is not really needed. That's, no, that's why I'm not going to put it in here. The destructor is at the moment of the object being destroyed. Therefore, there is no need for uh, making it null. All right. Now I have this thing. I have the destructor. I have the constructor. Let's actually make this thing. So, so now I can, I can comfortably run this code of mine, controller 5, with no, of course, it doesn't do anything, but, but I know there's not going to be any memory leak. It's going to create a, a string and kill it afterwards, OK? Everything's done. I have no memory leak. Life is beautiful. Now, what if I want to set a string to a value, OK? So what do I do? First of all, I'm not going to talk so the teacher can do what it does. Secondly, I'm going to say string, and I want to set it to a C string that is coming from outside, OK? So I'm going to say constant, constant, character, pointer. And I'm going to actually call it C string. So people know that's a C string I'm setting this thing. It's not just a character pointer. It's a C string. And then I'm going to design it over here. So let's write it over here. I'm going to say string, string, constant, character, pointer, in here, I'm just going to say SDR. I don't care about uh, I know what I'm doing here. Nobody looks at your CPP file to see what a function does. They look at your header file. That's why your header file should be very much self-describing, if I can call it. When I say string const character C string, they know it's a C string coming in. I don't need to put In here, I'm just going to put SDR. I want to get over quickly be done with it. OK. So now, what I want to do? I want to actually allocate memory for, to the size of that string that I have. And then, after allocation, I want to copy the value from that string into it. So the very first thing I need to know is to know what is the size, right? So I'm going to say m size is set to strlen of string. Now I know what the size of the string is. In one shot, 
I measured the size of the string, and also I set up the size of the object for future use. Then I'm going to say, OK, the data now is set to new character, m size, but I know I have to do the dirty work over here so others don't have to, so I'm going to say plus 1 for the null. Now, comfortably, I am string copying into the M data the string that is coming in because I know it's the perfect size for it. Are we okay with this? You have all done that. There's nothing new down here. Just, we are just reviewing. Are we okay? Are we okay? One. Are we okay? Two. Okay. Three. Let's, be able, let's, let's show this thing so I can actually write some code and see what happens. So I'm going to have a display. You know, like, like little kids, I have to separate those guys from each other over there so they don't talk with each other. Next time, I'm going to bring a water gun. Okay. So now I'm going to say O stream, reference, display, constant. I don't want to change anything. I just want to print it out. And O stream. I have to mention which name is space it belongs to. And now I know I cannot use using in a header file, so I'm going to use std over there. Here are where uh, I, can, I have the using namespace std, so I'm clear to go. So I'm going to say ostream. Uh, reference. String. String. And constant character. Oh, what am I doing? Uh, display uh, and const. So what do I do in here? I simply print it out, right? So I'm going to say C out. I'm going to print M data, and I'm going to return it. Are we good? Am I missing anything here? I think we're good. Do I need to check to see if it's null or not? If I don't know what my logic is, probably it's a good thing to do. OK? I know I'm never going to leave it as being null. I know that for a fact. So I don't need to check it. Because I am going to design it in a way so in any case they built my string, M data is pointing to something. OK? So. Writing over here, if it's not equal to null, sure, why not? We can do it just in case and print the message over there in case later on we'll find out we did something wrong. Okay? So, so in here, if I, if, because, because, the, this, because with my logic, M data should be impossible to become null, what I have to do, if I'm doing something like this, I'm going to say if it's not equal to null pointer, No return statement and if statement. OK, I'm going to have an else over here. C out. I'm going to say fatal error. No pointer in data. Because I am not designing it that way. If it is null, it means something went horribly wrong against my design. So it's not that it's empty. Something is wrong. That's why I did that. So later on, I know if maybe maybe I'm going to actually put an error message over. I'm going to say error number. I don't know number one. Okay. So later on, they tell me error number one happened, so I can actually search for it and find out where my code went wrong. Okay. Now I'm going to say return C out. So that's the better thing to do. Now I can actually test my code. I can come to String Tester and have an uh, S and R, let's say, and I'm going to set R to be he ha the hoo hoo, okay? And in here, I'm going to say S dot display, new line, and R dot display, new line, and see what happens, okay? So I'll run this beautiful program of mine, and three years later, when it runs, the first one is a blank string screen. In this, uh, the bl a blank uh, line, and second one is he had a hoo hoo. Are we okay with this? 
right? So it's getting somewhere, little by little. And I'm going to complete it as we, go, as we learn new features of C++ language. And I'm going to make this thing look more like a regular variable. So as we go further in a, in a, in a course, this S and R as are going to, you will see, they're going to look like regular variable as you're saying integer A. And you're going to work with it that way. You, mark where it was. Remember what I told you. OK? So what else I want to do with this, uh, with this, with this thing? So I have the display. <sighs> so down to this, everything is OK, that, that in this place. Now let's set it to something. Now when I am, when I am at this stage, which is, let me take this display out of the, I put it at the wrong place. Because uh, everybody, let's listen to him and see what he has to say. OK. All right. So all the voice in this class are coming from that location. All right. All right. So I know. I know you guys. Anyway, so <clears throat> down to this point. Did I need to ever worry if M data is pointing to something before doing dynamic memory allocation? Is there a possibility of memory leak in here? And all those people who asked when the, mem when the, di when the destructor is called and when did the constructor, when it got quiet, you know what it is. Don't, we're like a family, we're talking with each other. It's not like a class that I'm going like, to you know, put you on. I just want you to participate. So tell me what's going on in your brain. Don't worry, nobody. We are all students, right? OK, so is it possible for M data to point to an already allocated memory in a constructor? It's a stupid question. No. Is it possible for a child to be born before it's born? No. M data, at the, it, this is the moment of creation of that. It's impossible for it to point to anything because it is the point of creation. So I do not need to check to see if the thing is pointing to anything or not, or if it's null or not, or whatever. Right? Right? Now, for the other thing that I want to do, we need to check that. I want to write uh, uh, a function called set. So I want to be able to set a string to a new value not just initially created to something. Halfway through our program, I want to set it to something new. If I want to do that, what do I do? First of all, functions called set. What do I return in set? Nothing. OK, now, this is my habit. This is what I do. When, it, when, I, was using, when I was doing C programming, nothing for me was always void. Right? When I'm doing C++, when my function is not supposed to return anything, you know what I return? The object itself. Maybe it's got to be used. I always make the member functions return a reference of the owner. So it could be used later on. It makes the programming easier. It doesn't hurt. If they use it, they use it. If they don't, nothing's lost. So what, I'm gonna, what, are you, what I do, instead of nothing that is void, I'm going to actually set it string. Let me just bring it down here. String uh, set. Oh, string reference set constant character pointer C string. So my set will return reference of the string itself. You'll see how handy it's going to be later on. So let's actually write that code. So I want to write set, and it belongs to string, and it returns this. This is what I'm sure about, but nothing else. I know it's going to return an instance of itself. It's going to return the reference of the owner of its logic, OK? 
That's fine. What's going to happen inside, I'm not sure. Now I have to think. So whenever you are returning a reference of the owner, return star this at the end. Did I say star? Target of this, sorry. Return target of this, which essentially means reference of this class, and then start coding. Now, the string is coming in, right? So the very first thing I need to do before doing that, because it's set, it happens halfway through the program. It means when set is called, string already exists. It means it is going to point to somewhere. M data is already pointing to something. Now I want it to point to something else. So I have to take care of the old one. Because my logic doesn't go through anything that M data is not set to anything, it, all, it, it doesn't have a safe empty state. It always points to something. I comfortably delete it before I get in. So I'm going to say, I don't want it. I'm setting it to something. So delete the old data. First, I delete the old data. Now the old data is gone. Do I need to set it to a null pointer? Meh. I'm going to just right now overwrite it with a new memory allocation. Why do I do that? If it wasn't a function, yeah. That you didn't know where, where it's going to be used. If you had a function called set empty or uh, set, in, uh, uh, set in safe empty state, if it was the case, then yes, you delete, then you set to null because you don't know what they're going to do after. In here, I'm just doing it right now, so I don't need to do it. So, I'm going to, after this, I'm going to set the size exactly like the other one to strlen of string. And then after that, I'm going to set the data to new character m size plus 1. And let's put this one str2. Okay? And then after this, I'm going to say str copy into m data str. Deja vu. I've seen that somewhere. I've seen this logic somewhere. Where did I see it? Right above. Whenever you see repeating code, light bulb should go on. Immediately. It's time for a function. You never ever should have repeating logic. Any repeating logic has a purpose. There is no doubt about it. Therefore, it has to be packaged in a place and be reused over and over. What is this thing doing? What are these three lines doing? Can anybody tell me what these three lines can do? It measures the length of the string mm -hmm. and then put it in a variable. And because we are using the C string, it means there is null at the end. So we add one more. Beautiful. Uh, to the size of the variable, and then allocate memory, and, uh, and then copy it. Copy. Okay. Now in English, um, you're just uh, deallocating and allocating again. Not and deallocating. Deallocating is not being repeated. Only the repeated one. Uh, so you. So I'm allocating and then. And you are returning the current object. Yes. No, no, no. Only what is being repeated. You see the blue size up? The blue oh, the highlighted blue. over there. Exactly that is repeated down here, that, those three lines, okay. 13, 14, and 15. What are those three lines doing? Allocating and? Copy. Copy. Allocating and copying, is that correct? <coughs> Let's call it that. So I'm going to say these three lines are allocating and copying memory. That's what they are doing, right? So I'm just going to go to the private part. In here, I'm going to say void allocate. That's too big allocate and copy constant character pointer c string okay so that's what it's doing so i'm going to put it right in there because i want to reuse it why did i put it in a private section because it's internals of my class no one else is supposed to use it outside i am using it as a tool inside to build my things so i'm going to copy that thing and put it right over here there we go, and I'm not gonna, and I'm gonna just just say string over here, string, and and all I need to do first, I'm gonna change it to str, and I'm just gonna copy this and paste it right over here. So and then call the function instead. Let me just make put go a little right over here, 
So it's getting, uh, I can see the whole picture. So now those three lines are happening. In here, I'm going to say allocate and copy for the string. And in here, I'm going to say whoopsie daisy. That's what I'm going to say. There you go. Oh, there you go. In here, I'm going to come, come, come here and say allocate and copy the string. All right? Now, this is called a self-describing code. Take a look at this line. Oh, wait a minute. Look at my default constructor. What is it doing? It's allocating and copying, right? It's allocating and copying an empty string. So I'm going to even change that one. So I'm going to say allocate and copy an empty string. Voila. Now take a look. What does the default constructor do? It allocates and copies an empty string. What does a constructor do? It allocates and copies a string. What does a set do? First it deletes the data, then it allocates and copies the string. So now my function name is explaining what my code is doing. And I can reuse it over and over and over if I want to, with no problem. Now, in here, I'm going to say, you have the same thing in your lab. You have that thing, copy schmoppy thingy. You have something, didn't you? Uh, like, it's, a, it's the optional section of it. In, huh? Utils, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you can add to utils. It's something like this that I have to actually mention something about it. There's something creepy in there that probably you don't know what it is. I'm going to explain. But that, that here will be OK. Clear down to you? So, so now if I want to write a code for this, I can actually write uh, r.set uh, What do I write over here? Uh, uh, something Something and something Okay, and I'm going to say r.display, and I'm going to go to new line. So now you would see that it actually resets and, and does everything perfectly. Okay, so, so now I can set a string to something else. First of all, my string adjusts itself exactly to the size of the thing that I want. I don't have to say, OK, I want to hold someone's name. Let me see what is the maximum size of length. I don't do that anymore. I simply put a string over there and set it to whatever the name is. If it's three characters, it's going to be three. If it's 50, it's going to be 50. No worries. OK, number one. Number two, the good thing is that soon it's going to look very good. At this, at this point, it kind of sucks because, like, come on. Like, yeah, so many things I have to type to have a string. But soon you'll see it's going to be much easier. Now, uh, at line seven, assignment at the moment of creation is calling to a constructor with one argument. Remember, assignment at the moment of creation is calling to a constructor with. Now, let's do something. Let's do something in here that's going to make the program crash, and we'll fix it, and we're going to call it a lecture. <laughs> and we'll continue the rest later, OK? So I'm going to write a piece of code. And that piece of code is going to crash this thing. And then we're going to find out why, and we'll fix it, OK? Two seconds. So let's say I want to have a function that displays the name in braces, OK? So I want, when I want to show, show the string in braces, I'll call that function. How does that function work? It's as simple as this. I simply say, so void. Uh, display in braces, and I pass a string to it. Mm, they're both called S. So uh, string in braces, I'll call it SP. OK? So what do I do? First, I'm going to print a, a square bracket here. 
Then I'm going to say sp.display. And then after that, I'm going to put that one and go to new line. There you go. So what's going to do? It's going to get the string, put braces, display it, close it, and get up. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? All right. So now I'm going to come over here and say display in braces. And I'm going to display R in here. I just passed the, the class to it, right? Now when I run this beautiful program of mine, what the devil was that? Debug assertion failed, yada, 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 expression, yada, yada, for information, you know. It failed. Crashed at the end. It looked like everything working properly, right? But right at the end, it died. What happens when something like this happens? It doesn't let me go. OK. And then it comes out with code whatever. So something died in here. And this is what happened. I'm sorry that I have to use this paint thingy again, but hey. So So this, this was R, correct? And the R had data and the size, correct? The data was pointing to what I wanted to print. If you see what I'm, this very bad thing, it just doesn't work on it. But anyways, uh, that shows what it is, right? So that's, the, this, that's my R and that's the data with it, right? Now, this is the string that I have as argument, the SB, right? SB has data and it has the size, correct? Any problem with this? Are we okay? Okay, I'll show it to you. That's the R that has something, something, something in it now, right? And this is the SB that is receiving. The SB that is receiving a string. That's another string that is passed by value, correct? So when the function is called, R is being passed by value to SB. Is that correct? Are we okay with this? Now, R is being passed to SB. What does it mean? The content of R will go into SB. Is that correct? Therefore, what R is pointing to, SB is going to point to. Therefore, this is going to happen. Correct? And whatever value you have in here is going to go in here, which is the size. Are we okay down to here? Now, display embraces does it work and prints everything. It looks amazing, correct? Display embraces ends. SB dies, correct? When SB dies, what happens? When SB dies, the destructor is called, correct? What is being deleted? M data. What is going to get deleted over here? This is going to be gone, correct? But R still thinks there is something there. I didn't delete anything for R. I deleted SBs, correct? Now I go back in here. It comes back very happily. Everything is printed. Comes back in main. Now R wants to get out of get, get de deallocated. The destructor of R is being called. It says delete M data. M data is pointing to a location that is already deleted. Ha! Huh, program crashes. Okay? Why? Because when I was copying the thing, when I was copying the thing, I did not copy it. I let the system copy it. System is not aware of dynamic memory allocation. It doesn't know anything outside of this structure exists. Therefore, when it copies, it only copies the contents of inside structures. Things outside are not there. 
So I have to kind of tap in to this copying process and say, wait, you don't do the copying, I'll do it for you. How do I do that? With a function. What kind of a function? Not a function, a procedure. What kind of procedure? A third type of constructor that we, did, we do not know. We know a default constructor, no argument constructor. We know a constructor that can have one or many arguments. This one is called a copy constructor. A copy constructor only has one signature and one signature only, which means you can only create it like this and there is no other way. The name is string because it's a constructor. It accepts a constant string reference string to be copied. Okay? Why it receives a reference and not a value? Because if it uh, gets a value, it becomes chicken and the egg. If you are calling a constructor, it's passed by value, it has to call the copy constructor to run the copy constructor to run the copy constructor to run the, and it becomes a causality loop, right? I am tapping into copying. I'm defining what copying is. So no copying should happen in here, right? If I told you what is a string, you say a string is a string that does this. It doesn't make sense. You cannot define something with itself. Therefore, I have to prevent copying. Therefore, it has to be a reference. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, just remember, you have to have a reference in a copy constructor. Otherwise, you're going to get a compiler error. It won't accept it. OK? Then I write the code for it. <coughs> Writing the code is easy breezy because now I know how to use my code. How do you reuse my code? Did I? Bad boy, I am. So what am I going to do in here? I'm going to say, I'm going to say, where is my, there you go, the constructor. So I'm going to say string, string, Constant, str uh, constant string reference s. Now I have written the code for it already. Allocate and copy s dot m data. I can access the private properties of a string. Why? I am in a string. Done. So what happens now? When copying, when that thing is being sent over there, it's not going to copy. It's not going to do the copying by itself. It let me do the copying. And how do I do? I do allocate and copy. Take a look. When the code is actually getting executed now, let me just uh, go to the point that I am calling the function. Where is the thing? So here it is. Now I'm going to come right before display and braces. I'm going to just stop over here. Take a look. So everything is displayed, as you see. He, ha, who, something, whatever, right? Now it wants to call that function. As soon as it wants to call the function, it has to build the string, correct? But the string is being built using another string. What does it mean? It receives one argument, and it's another string, which means it's going to go to my copy constructor. It comes to the copy constructor, goes to allocate and copy, and gets the string, finds out what is its size, allocates memory for it, copies the value. So now, what happens is this. Instead of pointing to that place, it's going to actually build another one over here, point to it, and copy all the information to it. Therefore, I'm going to have a real copy of the thing. Not just a fake copy. And now the string is going to get copied and goes out. And now the function is ready to be called. So the display is made, as you see. And now that the function is ending, mm -hmm. SB has to die. So it goes to the destructor of SB and deletes SB. No problem. It's its own copy. Let it delete it. It deletes it. 
goes out, comes over here, and now the rest of the stuff dies, and we are gone. That's it. That's called a copy constructor and how the copying happens. So we stop right at this point, and then the next day you're coming in, we're going to do memory resizing, reallocation, and all those good stuff. And we're going to talk about lots of nice, cool C++ features, okay? Um, and we have the quiz too, by the way. Remember that, okay? A quiz that you were supposed to have today. Okay, and by the way, again, all the due dates for, uh, for labs are 12 o'clock at night from now on. But you have to have the attendance done from the lab. Oh, well, I'm gone. All right. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? Yes, sir. And just to clarify. Wait, 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 wait. It's like they wanted to wait. <laughs> Let the question finish and then you can talk. I swear you can talk the rest of your life. Give me two seconds. Go. So just to clarify with the null pointers. So we know that we don't want to create them when we're deleting the... Um, Yeah, when, when we're deleting the memory allocation, right? Oh, you, you say, why am I not setting it to null? Uh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm talking like you were saying, like, there's no point to put the, to, uh, to put the pointer to null pointer when we're deleting the oh, yeah, memory because, allocation. Yeah, yeah. So then it would be, uh, like, it, it would make more logic to put it in, in the function that doesn't have a delete. Uh, yeah, so delete well, let's put it this way. Uh, take a look at this, please. Take a look, take a look, take a look, take a look, 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 look. It was, a, it was an important question. What? Everyone, important question. If I had something like this, as I had, I want your attention, please. Attention, attention, achtung, listen to me. All right. Like I have allocated and copy, let's say I had a function called deallocate. Okay whose job was to deallocate the memory. Are we okay with this? If I had such a function and I want to write the function, because that function can be called anywhere, and I don't know if it's exactly at the end, at the beginning where, if that was the case, which I'm going to remove, it's not going to be there, then I would have void string deallocate, and I had to after deleting m data, set the m data to null pointer. Because I don't know what's going to happen after. If you don't know what's going, what procedure, what action is going to be taken after you delete the memory, you have to make it null so others know it is deallocated. But if you know it's at the end of the lifetime and nothing's happening to it, like it's going to go away, then why do you make it null? You always make it null if you don't know what happens next. If there is any question or doubt on what happens next, make it null. So for now, I tell, I'm telling you, until you fully understand when you need it, obsessively make it null afterwards. And don't worry, I'm not going to reduce mark. Maybe I'm going to just tell you, no need. But I'm not going to reduce mark because I know you just want to have clean code. Okay? So in case you, you are not sure what's going to happen after this deallocation, make it null. But if you know what's going to happen, then do it accordingly. If you need to make it null, do it. Otherwise, don't. All right? Okay. So I'm going to remove this. I'm not going to put this thing over here because it really doesn't make sense to have it here. Check the other classes thing because they have some extra functions that you don't. <laughs>